All right, so this is OBS Music Edition, uh, OBS Studio Music Edition, and you'll notice that it's identical to regular OBS Studio. Uh, the only difference that you will see is that you now have a dock here for a master mixer. Uh, you may need to go uh, to view docks um, and then master mixer if you don't see it to make sure that, uh, that you've got it. Um, the first thing that you will notice off the bat is let's make some more space here. So this is your regular inputs, right? I've got my microphone, my desktop audio, virtual audio cable. And then the master mixer has got these six tracks. Um, but, um, I won't get into the details of tracks and, and how that all works. Maybe you find another video, especially if you're, uh, using this to do a lot of recording and you need to be able to separate different audio tracks or whatever. Um, if you're only streaming or you're only ever gonna concern yourself with the one track, then you can just like mute all of these or even better, you can click the gear and hide them, which is what I do because I'm really only streaming. Um, and now you don't have to look at all that. You just have your main, you know, your master track there. And I scooch it off to the side um, so that it's out of the way, and then I can sort of set up everything the way that I like visually. Okay, so um, the main benefit of this OBS ME Music Edition is that you now have this master output fader, slider, whatever you want to call it, channel. Um, and the idea is that now I can see what the actual output level looks like. Uh, instead of just looking at the individual inputs and saying like, okay, that input is a little too high and this one's blah, blah, blah. And then trying to assume what the mix sounds like. I've got the music playing, but also I'm talking and like, am I being drowned out by my music? Is my music too quiet? Like I want to control the balance of those things better. Um, and also just to make sure that the, all the audio coming together is not too loud, right? That I can bring it down. I can bring it up. You can apply all the same filters and, and things that you would to your inputs to this master uh, mix by going into filters. And you can do all the same stuff that you usually do with your individual inputs. It does not replace regular OBS Studio on your computer. So what's nice about that is that you're not overwriting on uh, uh, your regular OBS Studio program. It is separate. Right, which is kind of nice because you're not, you're not gonna um, have to uninstall OBS Studio just because you don't like OBS ME and start over again. Okay, and the other thing that that is nice is that you don't have to start over building all your scenes and scene collections and everything. This is still gonna target all of that stuff. So you built, you know, all your scenes and you built a bunch of scene collections. You've done a bunch of stuff in OBS Studio and now you've got this other program. Do I have to start over? No. It's going to detect, you know, all the stuff that you have before. All of my things are still here. Uh, it's, it's identical. So it's still targeting the same stuff. Um, so that's nice. You can play with this and decide if you like it without having to do a lot of work. You literally install it and then try it. Um, okay, so the other major benefit of this is that you can actually monitor the real output of your audio um, in real time. And I say in real time, but really there's a slight delay and that can be a little bit jarring. Like if you're speaking and then you're hearing yourself speak like a fraction of a second later in your headphones or your speakers or whatever. So um, do what you will with that. Okay, so, but that, know that that's a challenge here. It's not like real time, real time. Um, but it's close. So let me show you how to set up monitoring here. So if you go to settings and you go to audio, you'll notice, you know, you've got all your inputs that you select here, right? Your desktop audio, maybe you have a virtual cable that you use for rerouting certain programs, um, to a separate input. You've got your microphone that you use. Maybe you've got a soundboard or some other mics or something like that. Okay. So now in advance, you have monitoring device, and this is where you're going to select where you want to hear the output 
of your stream or recording. Um, now, typically you want to isolate that from your microphone, which is why you would want to send it to some headphones. Um, if you play through your speakers, it might bleed through your mic and then you have this awful echo and you don't want that. So um, here's where we want to talk about um, a conflict that may occur between the device that you're going to use to monitor your audio and the device that um, may be playing audio through your computer that you want to capture, like a uh, video game audio or um, your music or uh, a conference call that you're recording with a guest on your stream. Any audio that is being brought in via desktop audio is pretty much what I'm talking about. So um, you have to think about how you're going to isolate that because otherwise what happens is, let's say your monitoring de device is your desktop audio but then you're also playing a video game and you want the video game audio, which is also coming through as desktop audio. Well, what's gonna happen is you're hearing the sound from your game. It's coming in through the monitoring route and it's playing through desktop audio. So now you're gonna hear it twice. I know it's hard to, to like visualize all of that because we're talking about sound, but basically it's gonna loop back and you're not gonna want that. So you have to have your monitoring device separated from any other audio that's gonna be coming in as an input. This is where virtual audio cables can be re really useful. So what you could do is let's say you've got your headphones plugged into your computer and um, obviously that's your desktop audio and then you want to send your game sound or your conference call sound or any other programs that you're bringing in sound. It could even be a browser, right? Um, you need to set up a virtual audio cable and then have that sound run through a virtual audio cable and use that as the input in OBS to bring that audio into your stream or recording. And that way your desktop audio is solely used for monitoring. That is it, nothing else. And then you don't want desktop audio as an input at all, just to further isolate that from ever becoming an issue. So. What you could do is you could say, um, get rid of the desktop audio as a device entirely as an input and only have virtual audio cable as a desktop audio input, okay? And then you can set your monitoring device to your speakers, uh, which in my case would be the sound bar. Um, but then I would plug my headphones in that sound bar or whatever so that you wouldn't have the, uh, the echo through your uh, microphone. So. This definitely took some time for me to sort of understand the uh, conflicts that can occur here. So I'm going to show you real quick how to route your different programs to the virtual audio cable uh, instead of having them play through your default or desktop audio device. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to um, get into your sound settings in Windows. And here you go. This is what it looks like, Windows 10 and you're going to scroll down to app volume and device preferences and click that and so here's all of the open apps that you've got right now running on my computer this is what i've got open and streamlabs obs i have firefox obs etc um i'm going to open spotify too just so that there's another program that you can see that's running uh, in this list and you may need to um play some audio real quick just to wake it up in the list to show that um the Spotify is there or your game has to be running or something like that just to populate it in the list uh, and then you can pause it or whatever. Okay, so output and input. Don't worry about the input. We're just focused on output. What we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, I want, um, I want Spotify to only play through the virtual audio cable. Okay. And I only want, um, I also only want my browser. Let's say I want to listen in on someone's stream or I want to play a YouTube video and I want the stream to hear the audio of that or something. Uh, virtual audio cable. Boom. Um, okay. So now those things should come in. I can close this. They should come in here in the VB cable, uh, which I renamed. You can rename these things by just right clicking the gear and clicking rename. I renamed it VB cable just so that I remember that that's what it is. Um, but it is, it's now just coming in as an input here. 
and I'm gonna unmute this and then I'll play some audio. Okay, and I can see that the music is playing. Awesome. Simply put, the best way to make sure that this is actually working for you is to do a quick recording, right? Play all the things that you're gonna have playing and audio. If you're gonna have a microphone in there, talk, like do all the stuff, record it through OBS, and then stop everything, play the recording back, listen to it, and see if you're having any issues with stuff looping back, right? Now, obviously, if you've got the monitoring um, set up, right, where you, uh, you've you sent everything that you want as a audio coming in to your virtual audio cable, and then you've set your monitoring device to what you want it to be, you've got your headphones on or whatever, then you should be hearing that stuff uh, so long as you've clicked this little headphone here. So you click that. All right, so now you've got your uh, monitoring going and you wanna turn it back off. You just click it again, now it's gray, now it's off. And obviously what you're listening for is anything repeating, any audio playing twice or um, a weird echo or a feedback or just something that doesn't sound right, then you have to go figure that out. You need to go diagnose that. But basically, if you have disabled your desktop audio as an input in OBS um, so that you can use it as just the monitoring device, and then you've sent everything that you want um, to uh, play in your stream, your sound, uh, your, your music, your game sound, your whatever, um, to your virtual audio cable, and then you should be fine. You shouldn't have any conflicts. If you want a more professional sort of monitoring setup, uh, like the one that I need to use, um, then you could get something like, I bought this thing, um, which is, it plugs in via USB, you slap your headphones in there, you turn the knob up so that you can hear, and then you select this as your monitoring device in OBS, uh, and then that way it's completely isolated from any audio that you may want to bring in as an input into OBS, and then you don't have to disable desktop audio as an input. You can have desktop audio and your virtual cables uh, enabled in OBS Studio as your in, uh, as inputs and uh, route things to either one in whatever way you like. And you'll have the safety of knowing that uh, your monitoring will never loop back because it's gonna be playing through this piece of hardware. Now, one of the things to be aware of is that this is not like an official supported version of OBS. This is something that someone else made outside of OBS Studio as a pet project. And so it's out there on GitHub and you can write to the author, um, post about issues on GitHub about it, and maybe you get help that way. But keep in mind, this is not like a supported product in any official sense. So um, you may use it and it might not work. Something might be wrong about it and you may not be able to get any help with that. Um, and really there's nothing that that can be done about that. This is just out there for you to try, um, but it's it's not something that uh, anybody really supports. I actually had an issue on a different PC where when I did try to use desktop audio, the frequency was totally off and it sounded like slow and deep and weird. Um, I got around that by just using virtual audio cables and not using desktop audio. Um, so, but but that's that's not obviously working uh, as intended. Um, to have to to have to avoid using desktop audio if I if I wanted to be able to use it, whereas on this PC uh, there's nothing wrong. So there may also be things going on on your PC the way that your PC is set up or drivers audio drivers that you have that may cause an issue. Um, and like I said, you can either work around it or you can try to write the author of this uh, this program on GitHub and see if you can get some help. But uh, like I said, it's not officially supported. And so there really isn't um, much help that you can get outside of other people who maybe have used this and have some know-how. And that's it. Like I said, I may not be very helpful, but go ahead and post your uh, questions in the comment section anyways. And um, if I have an answer, I'll give it to you. And if not, then I'll at least point you in the right direction. Um, I'll try to put links for everything that I've discussed and um, see you later.